In today's tutorial, we will talk about the epilepsy, the types of epilepsy, the classification of seizures, the cause or pathogenesis of epilepsy, and uh, here we will discuss the anti-epileptics, anti-convulsants or anti-seizure drugs, means in short the drugs to treat the epilepsy. The very first term, epilepsy. Common neurological disorder means that epilepsy is actually a common neurological disorder. So now what is meant by this common neurological disorder? Here we have presynaptic neuron and here we have postsynaptic neuron. The normal pathway is the transfer of a signal from this neuron to this neuron, pre to post. What happens in the epilepsy, this neuronal activity is actually somehow increased. So that's why we call it as disorder neurological activity. So you can say that it is a common neurological disorder. Epilepsy is common neurological disorder. So some other books state that there is actually a kind of hyperactivity between two neurons. Other books state that there is actually a kind of abnormal electrical discharge between the neurons in the brain. So that is actually called as epilepsy. Well, uh, there is a kind of uh, further elaboration. It is not a single entity. This epilepsy is not a single entity. It is actually assortment, combination of different types of seizures means different seizure types are seen in the epilepsy plus syndromes means there are several types of symptoms seen in the epilepsy now some questions are oftentimes asked by the students some the questions are what is seizure what is conversion what is syndrome let me clear these all questions the very first question is seizures and convulsions what is the difference between these two terms Regarding uh, seizures and convulsions, we were talking about the pharmacology. We often study pharmacology by means of seizures, but some books they are actually uh, teaching us the pharmacology in that book by the term anti epileptics. And the same pharmacology in some other books is uh, entitled by the term anti convulsants. And the title used by some other books are anti seizure drugs. So you do not confuse yourselves regarding uh, these terms. These are actually interchangeably used. But the very simple difference regarding uh, these two terms is uh, that is of jerks. So if I compare these two terms by mean of jerks, this will actually differentiate these two terms. In seizures, you may and may not see the jerks. But in convulsions, you will see the jerks. Simple. And I will clarify this uh, that why you will see, why you will not see the jerks in classification of the seizures. And the second one is the syndrome. What is syndrome? The combination of different types of symptoms seen in a particular disease is actually called as syndrome. Very simple. So now let's come towards our next point that is the types of epilepsy. We have primary and secondary types of epilepsy. Actually, we have two types of patient. One patient is that who is having actually a kind of a disease due to which epileptic attacks are actually generating or a person is going to have epilepsy and the second one is not having any kind of disease but that person generates the epilepsy. The person having no any kind of disease but is having a, the epilepsy that is actually called as primary epilepsy and the person or the patient who is having the epilepsy or epileptic attacks is actually having a kind of disease condition like uh, the person may be having hypoglycemia or the person may be having meningeal infection or the person may be having alcohol withdrawal means if you withdraw the alcohol from a particular person that person might also have epileptic attack or epilepsy this kind of epilepsy is called as secondary epilepsy because this is actually second to a disease that's why it is called secondary epilepsy and this is first primary first epilepsy having no any prior disease now let's come towards the next term the classification of seizures seizures are actually classified into two main that is the focal and generalized the focal seizure you know your brain is actually composed of two hemispheres a particular portion of one hemisphere if generates the seizures that is actually known as focal seizure and we have further two types of focal seizures simple and complex and the very difference between these two is the consciousness in the simple seizure simple focal seizure the person if undergoes an epileptic attack will maintain the consciousness and in case of complex focal seizure if the person undergoes the process of epileptic attack 
then that person or that patient may or may not remember what happened during the attack so actually a kind of altered consciousness will be there in the complex focal seizure so here a person will maintain the consciousness here the consciousness will be actually altered in the complex now next one we have is generalized seizure now what is generalized seizure actually this focal seizure uh, when aggravates it will actually then cover the complete or the entire hemisphere and uh, this might also cover the second hemisphere or you can say the complete brain might be covered in the generalized seizure so focal is actually a very small portion of one hemisphere generalized is actually a complete hemisphere or both the hemisphere when they are actually firing abnormally when you see abnormal electrical discharge in the entire brain so that is actually called as generalized seizure and we have examples are the tonic tonic clonic absence and etc uh, in order to uh, understand further about uh, these two types of seizures these two classifications uh, i have a video where i am actually mentioning first of all uh, the type of seizure then there is a kind of a short clip video clip in which uh, a patient is shown uh, having any kind of epileptic attack suppose uh, a person is having tonic clonic attack or tonic attack means a tonic seizure so first of all i am explaining the tonic seizure after that i am adding a portion of another video uh, where there is actually uh, a kind of patient being shown of particular seizure so you can watch that videos also if you want to clear your concepts regarding these types of seizures and the next one is cause or pathogenesis and regarding cause you know we study the primary and secondary types of seizures and we have different syndromes in this so there is no any common uh, cause but regarding the pathogenesis point of view it is clear that it is hyper neuronal activity now how this hyper activity is actually generating let us know about that you know glutamate which is a uh, the neurotransmitter of the central nervous system this is actually the excitatory neurotransmitter and here we have the GABA the inhibitory neurotransmitter what happens normally is that action potential will reach sodium ions channel will open sodium will move in and you know when inside become positive the cell will undergo the process of depolarization and due to this the calcium channel will open and the calcium channel you know when they are uh, open the calcium will go in means there will be an influx of uh, calcium so influx of sodium caused the influx of calcium because this is voltage gated calcium channel and this calcium when entered this calcium will cause the fusion of the membrane of this vesicle so here we have uh, the neuron entered through sv2a into the vesicle and here they are stored and as the action potential reaches the sodium will move in and uh, this will cause the opening of the voltage gated calcium channel so then the calcium channel will open and the calcium ion will move in and you know the calcium ion is responsible to fusion of this vesicle so when it is fused what will happen next is the neurotransmitter the glutamate will be released and this glutamate will bind to these particular receptors here we have glutamate the two receptors waiting for the glutamate are nmda and mpa so what happens first of all the glutamate will stimulate the mpa it is actually stimulating in the meanwhile both the receptors but mpa is actually somehow open now what is mean by the open and close let me clear it here so calcium and uh, sodium will start moving in there will be influx of the sodium and calcium through the mpa receptor when it is stimulated by means of the, the glutamate regarding the nmda first of all it is closed here by mean of the magnesium or zinc so first of all is these uh, calcium and sodium starts moving in this calcium and sodium will actually generate a kind of repulsive force on this mechanism of uh, magnesium and zinc you know same like charges or like charges they actually repel like this uh, this uh, magnesium will be moved out from this uh, channel then this channel will become free after this channel becomes free again this nmda will mo allow more sodium and calcium to move into the neuron means it will allow the influx of sodium and calcium so like this the neuron the inside of this post synaptic neuron will become hyper positive and in the meanwhile there is a kind of inhibitory mechanism seen by means of the gabaergic neuron here the gaba will be released this gaba will come and will bind to the gaba receptor this receptor when it is uh, stimulated it will open a channel for the chloride ions and the chloride will start moving in here the cell is becoming positive by means of uh, nmda and mpa receptors because they are uh, allowing the sodium and calcium to move in and here the chloride is brought by the gaba receptor means uh, the chloride is actually influxed 
by mean of opening of the GABA receptor channel. So when the chloride is coming in, then the inside is becoming somehow negative. Now this negativity is actually helping to moderate the pathway or the activity between the neurons. So whenever there is a hyper discharge from the this presynaptic neuron of this glutamate neurotransmitter, so then what will happen then there will be hyper influx of the sodium calcium ions into this postsynaptic neuron. Like this, the activity will increase. This is actually responsible and going to cause the epilepsy. So now what is our goal? We are supposed to decrease the abnormal firing of the neurons. So how will we decrease? We will actually take the help of the drugs. So the drugs are actually acting on different sites. So I'm actually telling you people about those sites. These drugs are actually classified uh, according to the ancient and modern drugs. But I'm not going to tell you people regarding that point of view because then you uh, people might get confused. So in order to uh, explain this anti-epileptics, anti-conversants or anti-seizure drugs, I'm just uh, taking the help of this diagram and I urge you people to focus this diagram and remember the drugs for epilepsy by mean of this diagrammatic understanding. So here we have sodium channels, calcium channels, SV2A, transporter. So if we block these, uh, what will happen then? Then the glutamate will not be released. And here, what will we do? If we block this empower NMDA, then what will happen? Then there will be no any influx of positivity or positive ions. And like this, we can actually decrease the hyper neuronal excitation or a neuronal activity somehow. And uh, what will we do with this? We'll actually increase the chloride ion. This will be increased by uh, stimulating the GABA receptor. So how will we increase? We will increase by providing the concentration of the GABA neurotransmitter here. And we can increase the concentration of the GABA neurotransmitter by blocking the GAT, the GABA transporter. And uh, we can uh, increase by further by blocking this GABA transaminase enzyme. So if we block this enzyme, then the GABA neurotransmitter will not be metabolized. So like this, the concentration of the GABA will increase and this will cause the stimulation of the GABA due to which there will be influx of chloride ions. So when there is hyperchloride ions influx, it will cause some half decreased in the neuronal excitation because when inside becomes negative, then the cell's activity is somehow actually decreased. Why? Because when inside is becoming negative, this is causing the cells to become inhibited. So here, a kind of inhibition will be shown by this GABAergic activity. So uh, the drugs used for sodium are actually phenytoin, zonisamide, lamotrigine. These are the common drugs. We do have some other drugs also. And for the calcium are the ethosuximide. For the SV2A we use two types of drugs, levetyl acetum and bryvir acetum. And here if you want to block these receptors, we use uh, parampamil for the MPI receptor blocker. And uh, as an MDA blocker, we use felbamate. And you guys got the concept, when we block these, then there will be no any influx of the positive ions. So when there is no influx of the positive ions, inside is not becoming positive, means the cell is not becoming depolarized. And the signal will not be proceeded further. Or if it is proceeded, it will be proceeded in a very slow manner means you can say neuronal activity is decreased and here we will give the GABA mimetics which are actually increasing the GABAergic activity those are the benzodiazepines and barbiturates regarding the benzodiazepines and barbiturates we have studied number of drugs but uh, the functional drugs are the clonazepam and diazepam regarding the benzodiazepines and uh, while uh, regarding the barbiturates we use uh, the phenobarbital and we do have another drugs uh, of the barbiturates and uh, further we have uh, GAT for to block this particular transporter we will use diagabine and to block this enzyme we will use Vigabatrin. Once again in short we block many things here but we stimulate one thing that is the GABA receptor is actually stimulated its activity is increased and rest of others are actually blocked. We block the GAT, we block the GT, we block the NMDA, we block the MPA. We blocked the V2A, we blocked the sodium channels, we blocked the calcium channels and like this by blocking all these and stimulating this we are actually inhibiting or decreasing the hyperactivity of the neurons. So this is our main goal to decrease the hyperactivity of the neurons. When there is decreased hyperactivity of the neurons so then we will actually have a kind of countering action on epilepsy. And this is all about in short from my side. If still you have any kind of confusion or question regarding this particular topic here, you can drop that in the comment box and feel free to ask us any kind of question regarding the topic in the comment section. We are here to help you guys. Thank you for watching.